Friday, day 13, week 13, network admin. <clears throat> okay, and we finish up the course next week, so students, you should review any curriculum, complete all the quizzes in chapters 1 through 7. Need to complete all those. You can look at the answers and the questions when you took the chapter 1 through 5 exam. You can email me, you know, if you have some specific questions. And then there's a practice final that's turned on. If you look down through the modules, you can find that practice. Talked about security today. And then we did a small connectivity lab on static IPs. Let's take a look. Data. We're thinking about data in a digital form. So data integrity represents if the data is accurate. Data confidentiality, we talk about who can see the data. Is it confidential? Only the people that need to see it. And this one's a little harder to understand, availability. We need to make data available for people to be able to do their jobs. Like a, um, yeah, a denial of service attack, you know, where somebody denies your opportunity to use technology to get to the data you need to get to to do your job. Now this data, we can be concerned about it in terms of where it's stored, Okay, so think about data on some storage device. And then we talked about today a little bit ransomware, where they encrypt your stored data, and then you have to pay them to get the key to decrypt it. Where data is stored, we're concerned about that. When data is in transit, when it's moving, between locations. We probably think about that most of the time. You have your phone and you contact or do some banking on the internet which is then connect to I don't know, US Bank. You know, while it's moving. Okay? That somebody isn't doing something to your data. And then while it's being processed you know, right in the computer. So while it's in your laptop being processed, or the example we use is at a checkout when you slide your debit card. Is there, is that safe? There isn't something grabbing that information while it's being processed. Now, to secure the data, we create products and devices. We have firewalls, we have intrusion prevention systems, we have virus software, we have um, software to take care of malware, um, all kinds of products and devices we can use to protect us. We write policies, you know, make sure people aren't doing dumb things like clicking on links they shouldn't click on. And then we also have guidelines, you know, a policy would be something like a rule, a guideline is more like something you should do. Um, guidelines would be like Maybe um, a company would tell you, you need to change your password every month. But they don't actually make you do that either. You know, they, they let you do some of the things, guidelines. We talked about then there's procedures to be able to put these in place. Procedures we follow. And then the last one are people. Just because the nature of people being so trusting, um, sometimes that creates a problem. We could have issues with... Uh, Internal people making mistakes and allowing people in, or being just bad actors and uh, doing stuff. Or we have outside people trying to come in and attack our systems. So, in the example we're using here, our asset is our data. We don't want people to have access to data. That, that has lots of value. In fact, they're saying data is more important than oil now. You know, all the data being collected by Google, Facebook, and so forth, and then being used. So data is the key, and so we want to make sure we, we 
retain the integrity, confidentiality, and make it correctly available. Is there a threat? Whoops. Let me undo that. Is there a threat to your data? And is there somebody that can carry out the threat? You know, if you're if somebody's going to steal some data or change some data, is there a threat that that could happen? And then, what level of vulnerability is there? Okay, how vulnerable are you to somebody getting in and doing something to your data? You put that together in a risk, and then you decide, you know, do we take the risk, do we try to mitigate the risk, or do we move the risk, like get insurance. Companies can get insurance to cover ransomware, which is crazy. How does an attack happen? A lot of times it starts out just scanning. People will be scanning ports, scanning, 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 doing things that are typically legal via the internet now until they gather some information that then allows them to come up with some way to hack in and then they can manage the logs, they can um, create a back door in and then do nefarious things from where they have been. Just as a little example of the steps that might follow. Now, how do we how do we manage people's access to data? Well, we authenticate them. Who you are, authorization, what you can do, and accounting and auditing track what you did, keep track. The who can be something we have, like our debit card or our um, access card to a building or a fob, a fob to your car or something. So it's something you have, something you know, password, pin number, so forth, that's something you know, and then something you are, like your thumbprint, your um, some like the Apple will read your face and so forth. All right, so we have this whole process of authenticating, authorizing, and accounting. That's done on computer systems everywhere. Now, to help protect our data, we can encrypt the data, encryption, using a key to encrypt the data, you know, make it so other people can't read it. So we can encrypt it, and let's just use an example, or send it to somebody, and then they can, with the key, decrypt it. So send this cipher text over here and then decrypt it to plain text so we can read it. Now hashing is a method of taking the data and creating what's known as a hash, a fixed length, fixed length hash. Where that one place is used, first of all, that's used for passwords. Hashes are used for passwords. Another place is you can take your data, and let's say we're transferring the data, we can encrypt it, decrypt it on the other end, then we have our data. Now the data can be hashed, so we send, and then we send the hash over, and then when the data gets over here, we can hash it again, and then compare the hashes, and if they're equal, then the data wasn't changed in transit. And the last thing we talked about, VPNs kind of has to do with encryption. You can pay a VPN service so that um, you have some app or whatever on your device, your phone, or maybe, um, maybe a laptop or something and it connects you to one of their servers, the provider for VPNs, and then they connect you into the cloud, into the internet. And they can do a lot of things. Um, I just read about one today, earlier, you know, they have a cost, it's, a, it's around seven bucks a month, but they claim they move you around, they have like I forget what they said, 500 servers or maybe more than that. Um, and they can move you around so it's hard to identify your IP. 
uh, your information is encrypted so nobody can read it, and so forth. If you're in a public, if you spend time in a public Wi-Fi, you got to be careful what you're doing in a public Wi-Fi in terms of your communications. And um, these VPNs, virtual private networks, are one way to protect that. Another thing they're used for are companies will set up VPNs to send information through the Internet between two locations for their company. All right. One last note we were talking about. Um, years ago, I read a book, I think it's called Nudge. They were trying to get people, to, they had a highway that runs a car next to... Um, uh, it ran it's in Chicago and it ran next to the the lake and it, it kind of curved along the lake and then a little beach here and stuff and they weren't trying to slow people down and they're having a heck of a time to slow them down they have these signs you know saying slow down 35 or whatever so some somebody kind of smart they said well let's put some lines far apart then as they get close to where the speed changes put the lines closer together so when a car is driving, when they hit here, it gives them the perception that they're going too fast, and then they slow down. And it actually worked. Yeah, it worked. All right. Well, that's it next week. Okay, next week. Let me, uh, let me highlight it because the final. Okay. And it's similar to that, I mean, we took that chapter 1 through 5 exam. So it would be a lot like that with chapters 6 and 7 materials. I'll go through it and we'll curve it. Curve it a little bit in terms of we'll add in some points. For questions, well, first of all, any questions from chapter 8 and 9, we'll count those up. So if you get them wrong, we're going to add those points back in. So that's just like, you know, kind of like getting them right. Then if you get them right, that'd be like a bonus. Okay, and then I'll look through. So there's probably a few things in chapters 1 through 7 that I might deem worth not counting against your grades. So we'll do that at the end, but we'll take that on Friday, and there may be a little bit of work um, that I'll put together too with that. Well, that's it. Just think, only one class session left. Well, that's it. Over and out. Not quite over and out. The last thing I mentioned, we did a lab today, and it was a handout. So if you want to make that up, you'll have to pick that up from me and um, stop by the, the classroom in order to do that. We uh, do some static addressing. You have to be able to set a static IP and configuration in a PC. Now I'm done.